So more malware out there that could potentially steal your crypto. This one actually targets crypto uh, browser extensions, wallets and 2FAs. Just be really, really careful <laughs> with your money. Be really careful not clicking on random links. And it's just, I mean, it's its difficult because new announcements like this come out all the time. This one, actually, it's called Mars Stealer. It's an improved copy of a different iteration which came out around 2019 called the OSCE Stealer. And the idea is that it uses this custom grubber. It retrieves its configuration from the command and control infrastructure. And then it proceeds to target application data and popular, as I said, web browser extensions while it's 2FA. Um, so when you're using these digital assets, I think the takeaway is just be really, really careful out there. And I would go even further. I am completely skeptical of all browser <laughs> extension plugins. Like there, there are lots of cybersecurity experts who dig into that and just say, listen, fundamentally, this is pretty insecure and you should be aware if you're using things in in uh plugins that that your thing your maybe it's passwords maybe it's wallets or whatever you know it may be uh, more insecure than you realize and i think it was crypto it was um blockchain chick so heidi chakos from crypto tips she did this uh piece years ago i think when she was talking about metamask and like maybe you shouldn't be using this but just looking at the permissions that you give some of these things to actually log what you're doing on any page like a lot of the time these things are set to default so that it can just be reading everything you're writing <laughs> in the browser so just make sure that you uh, are selecting if you are going to go this route and use these browser plugins is make sure you're selecting that it's only able to read things when you're actually actively using it. Like there are lots of things to be aware of with all this stuff. I'm going to first to the group for general malware takes. Is this something that you guys are worried about? Will, I'll throw it to you to start. I'm actually really glad you brought this up because I think this is something that most people don't know about. They're not going to find these headlines, but they matter a ton. I don't think anyone who's watching this show is probably going to be targeted by this. It's typically these things are target against like specific individuals who are high net worth. But that doesn't mean that's not a good opportunity to learn about protecting your private keys. Naomi might disagree with me a little bit, but I think for the most part, like 95% of people are not going to be hit by something like this. But it is a really good opportunity to learn about how to protect your private keys, especially something like MetaMask, which most people have in their browser at this point who are involved in crypto. It's very easy to swipe those keys and steal your tokens. That's been the whole thing with this Board Ape Yacht Club, this huge NFT community that continues to have their seed phrases stolen over and over again. And the simple reason why is because they share their seed phrase when they shouldn't. That's the number one rule in crypto. Don't share a seed phrase. Don't even share it with your mother. Don't share it with your dad doesn't matter. Don't share it. Go to the grave with that as opposed to sharing with anybody unless you have some sort of protective scheme set up like CASA or a multi-seg, but we can get into that later. I think the importance of these stories is just teaching people about the basics of how to protect your wallets. And Naomi, I liked what you said. Use cold wallets, use offline storage, use something like that. An in-browser wallet, it's very susceptible to being swiped. And if you have a lot of money on there, you're going to have a bad day at some point. Something's going to happen. It's going to be swiped. It might not be this Mars stealer, but there's going to be something out there that's going to steal your coins. But you might disagree with me on the susceptibility. So I actually want to hear that because that might be a different threat model than I would kind of assume this would be towards. Yeah, and to be specific, I think that browser plugins are far more insecure than, say, like a hot wallet on a website. Um, just by their inherent nature, it's uh, there's a lot of stuff that's transmitted in the clear that people don't realize. Like it's it can get pretty murky uh, when, when it comes to security, and it's probably not as secure as you may presume, given that it's like everywhere <laughs> in the crypto world, everyone's using these things. Um, but I will say that I I don't think it's just individuals that are being targeted; it's websites that are being targeted. Targeted. So if you you frequent certain websites, you know, and you click on a malicious link, then you're susceptible to something like this. So just be really careful if you're going to different crypto sites, things that you might not ordinarily um, access. I mean, even MetaMask, there are all these clone websites out there that look exactly the same. You would have such a hard time figuring out whether, you know, which one was the original. Just look really carefully at that URL and just make sure that if there are any pop-ups and even if it's like, hey, do you want to do this thing? Like, just be careful what you're clicking. Sometimes they make a 
button that actually is a download button, like look like an X. So you think you're closing or whatever. Just be really careful with these things. Um, you know, if, if you get thing, strange things happening on your computer. Um, and there are lots of websites out there that will give you extensive tips on how to, you know, navigate these waters and what to do in certain examples. Probably too much to go into in this, this show, but I think, Will, you gave some great tips there. Storing your crypto offline is an immediate, uh, really good step that you can take there. But Jen, I'll throw it to you. What are your thoughts on all this? You kind of answered my questions. I was going to say, you know, there are so many barriers for people who are getting into crypto and then looking at the access that that people may have when you're using an extension wallet and looking at the privacies that you were mentioning in your intro just adds to to those barriers. And I can completely understand how people may not understand um, the accesses that people have. And so we have like, don't click on links that you don't know. Don't store money in your browser extension wallet or don't store a lot of money in your browser extension wallet more than you want to use in maybe one certain instance. I was going to ask you, Naomi, what are what are some other tips that you know newbies should keep in mind when they're entering the space? But you've kind of answered it and maybe you can direct people to uh, a source of information where it's easily accessible and easily digestible. Well, I think Coindesk just celebrated Privacy Week last week. So some great it's content true. was put out about security and prepping yourself. So check through all of that. But I do want to go through something else to do with this specific malware uh, exploit. So apparently um, this malicious software checks the user, uh, checks their ID settings. And if that device's language ID matches Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, or Uzbekistan, uh, then the program will exit without performing any malicious behavior. So they've isolated these specific countries and said, we're, ne we're not going to steal any crypto from you. I thought that was really interesting. Like, are they the countries that their founders are all from? Like, it's just, like, it's just very, very interesting. Criminals um, with morals. Patriotic malware. Uh, yeah, no <laughs> kind of interesting there. 